you were just telling me about yeah. um, you guys have this nice shiny bright brand new 15 barrel fermenter yeah in a amazingly tiny space <laughs> we have nine yeah, it's it'd be awesome right so yeah. I don't see how a 15 barrel fermenter can fit in nine uh, thank you sir we didn't either in nine foot ceilings uh, so we uh, we were looking at having some ones custom fabricated and we're looking at the lead times for this and we already had a vendor and we already had things picked out and uh, uh, instead of getting 15s we realized we get the cone uh, the 60 degree cone we wanted at the bottom without having to shorten it to 45 and do a bunch of other things we could really only get about 12 barrels in usable capacity out of that for right. if they custom built it and shortened it down so uh, after a, a little bit of math and CAD work we figured that we can take a stock 15 bar barrel fermenter uh, if we cut out our ceiling and cut two inches off the bottom of the legs in the back. We could so actually you had to it up into actually space. cut the legs of the fermenter. Yeah, so it's, we got two brand new fermenters showing up. Oh yeah, there we go. Careful, that might be sharp. That's, that's the bottom. <laughs> now they're custom. Yeah, with an angle grinder. So we're out there. <laughs> These things come off the back of the truck and uh, we put them out there. We, we basically just go at them with an angle grinder and cut two inches off the bottom of the legs. and. Uh, 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 push them in here. We cut out the. You know, whole I know approximately right how much a 15 barrel fermenter costs. Yeah. I'm not really sure if I'd feel comfortable going at it with an angle grinder. No, no 25k worth of fermenters show up outside, and I'm just <laughs> hacking legs off the bottom. So, yeah, but you know, they got a fit, and uh, the option was to wait another three months and and have uh, 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 you know somewhere in the 12 barrel range versus getting them here. We got them here almost three months cheap, uh, three three months less lead time because they're stock fermenters, cut the backs off, cut the ceiling out, and we're gonna, uh, and still kind of, I don't know if the camera sees that, it's still kind of open up there. Uh, we're getting that all redone and re-insulated up there and, and reframed in. But yeah, that was the way to fit them. And uh, we cleared that with, I mean, it, it was rubbing the whole way. I, it, it, it just oh, yeah. barely fit. You I mean, see, there's scratches on the top, believe me, because that's the only way to fit it. To, to, I don't even see how you got it in. Well, and it's the—it's not so much the height issue; it's the tilting it up issue. You need that extra little bit of space yeah. to tilt it up. So that's why we couldn't even put the final framing or the insulation back up until they were tilted into place, uh, uh, because we needed that extra little bit. But yeah, we did the math, and it worked. You know, yeah, the third time we figured out how to fit them in, it we we got it right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of uh, calling regulars from the tap room in to help yeah. out is you know. Oh, you, you recruited, more. oh, what's that, uh, crowdsource construction, right? Exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, yeah, that, that was interesting. But, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to doing some more. From yeah. fermenter leg to they're, lethal weapon. Yeah, they're, they're a little sharp. Yeah, I was, I was the one that was skeptical about this process, but it worked out. Cutting the legs off yeah. of fermenter, you were skeptical? No. Oh. I can't imagine why. It was, it was painful, but it works, so... Yeah, I mean, it fits. I think you've got, what, three inches of clearance? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't figured out how I'm going to find any of these beers yet or uh, yeah. dry hop. I don't think the IPA is going to be able to go into one of those, at least not initially. But We're going to have to build a hop can and just dry hop. <laughs> Shoot it in. No joke. Oh, yeah. Well, at least you got a side manway. If you had a top manway, I don't think oh, you'd be able to no, do but, it. Well, even dry hopping later, I just, I don't know. I guess we could possibly pre-hop it, but... Yeah, uh, put it in a rack, rack the beer onto the hops that we put into the manway door, but I don't know how it's going to do it. Well, you could, uh, couldn't you do like a auger system like for grain and um, yeah. auger the hops up there? Possibly. Good. You want to lend us some money? No. <laughs> uh, no. I mean, you're brewers, you're rich, right? Yeah. <laughs> if beer was currency, we would be. Yeah. We, uh, We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll build the cannon. It'll be it'll be yeah. awesome. We'll be we'll be the only uh, fifteen barrel brewer, or fifteen barrel fermenter that needs a hop cannon to actually pitch. It sounds like a good beer name. For fire. our uh, yeah, actually, hop cannon. For our uh, viewers that don't know what a hop cannon is, you want to explain it? Um, you know what a spud gun is? A potato gun? Yes. Who in the South does not know what a potato gun is? picture instead of the potato we're gonna put hops in it and we're gonna basically put a little u-shape into, into the thing so that way rather than having to get up in the two inches of ceiling clearance <coughs> excuse me pressed air 
pushes the hops. Yeah, but are you going to use right uh, right guard aerosol to to uh, no, power no. it? We'll <laughs> likely we'll likely use CO2. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, dry filtered CO2, sanitary kind of stuff. But uh, no, no, Aquanet or right guard is probably not going to cut it on this one. Uh, it shoots a potato pretty far though. That's what okay. Holstein uses for the carver, right? Sweet potato gun. I can just see them like firing sweet potatoes from across the brewery into the manway. But I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Well, no, because they match with it. No, they probably get it. <laughs>